Hello and welcome to the Energy Brief. Today we shall be discussing the overview of key oil and gas regulations in Nigeria. So, you are an investor looking to participate in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria, or you are a student who just needs an idea of how the petroleum regulations work in this country. You might also be a lawyer in need of a quick overview of regulations in the oil industry. I say congrats, because this video is exactly what you have been looking for. The Nigerian oil and gas sector is a component of the energy industry in the country. The sector deals with the exploration, production, and distribution of petroleum products. It is going through some transition that was brought about by the recent Petroleum Industry Act 2021, also known as PIA. So, right now, we have a formal regulatory regime which consisted of the Petroleum Act the Department of Petroleum Resources, the Petroleum Profit Tax Act, and so on, and a new and current regulatory regime under the PIA. This video will show and explain how the marriage of the former regulatory regime and the current one takes place. You also learn about other oil and gas laws and relevant regulatory bodies. All these are essential to know, especially for energy enthusiasts and professionals in the energy sector. The key regulations you should know and which we will be discussing include the 1999 Nigerian Constitution, of course, the Petroleum Industry Act, then the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Development Act, which governs local content. We shall explain what this means later on. The Environmental Impact Assessment Act, the Oil and Gas Export Free Zone Act, the Climate Change Act. We shall also be um, looking at the nature of the Nestra Act as it concerns oil and gas industry activities. Also, we'll be discussing the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency Establishment Act. Other regulatory bodies will be mentioned along the line include the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, the Oil and Gas Export Free Zone Authority, the Federal Ministry of Environment and um, other boards and agencies that are created under um, the Act we mentioned earlier. So first, the Constitution. This is the supreme written law that governs Nigerians and Nigerian government. It vests in the federal government ownership and control of all minerals, mineral oils and natural gas under or on any land in Nigeria its territorial waters and its exclusive zone areas. Compare this to what is applicable in the US, where ownership of petroleum involves a mix of federal, state, and private ownership. Private ownership of petroleum resources in the US can take the form of outright ownership of the oil reserves by oil companies. Meanwhile, here in Nigeria, private interests in petroleum only exist in licenses and leases offered by the government. Oil and gas is also an item under the exclusive legislative list. That is, it is a matter only the National Assembly, which is the legislative body in the federal government, can exclusively legislate upon. Also, we have the Petroleum Industry Act. As said earlier, the former regulatory regime comprised of four key statutes. The Petroleum Act 1969, the Petroleum Profit Tax Act, the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act, and the Pipelines Act. These laws have now been consolidated and updated by a new legislation called the Petroleum Industry Act. It was signed into law in August 2021. Now, the PIA does not repeal the former laws that um, former laws immediately because both regimes coexist until all the licenses issued under the former regime are converted or renewed to bring them under the PIA regime, which is the new regime. Okay, if you are following now, the PIA being the prominent oil and gas law introduces new institutional regulatory um, licensing and fiscal regimes for the Nigerian petroleum industry. So this is where you should follow me closely now. The law creates two separate regulators for the oil and gas market. We have the Nigerian Upstream Regulatory Commission and the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Regulatory Authority. The first commission regulates the upstream sector which involves petroleum exploration, prospecting, and mining, while the authority regulates the midstream and the downstream sectors which involve petroleum refining, 
storage, transport, um, transportation, and sale of refined petroleum products. I made a video on the differences in upstream, midstream, and downstream. You can check it out. Also, under the PIA, the Minister of Petroleum Resources is empowered to issue the appropriate licenses or leases, including the Petroleum Exploration License, the Petroleum Prospecting License, and the Petroleum Mining Lease. I'll give a brief explanation of these three types of licenses which companies um, get from the Minister. The Petroleum Exploration License confers a non-exclusive right to carry out petroleum exploration operations within a licensed area. Meanwhile, the Petroleum Prospecting License grants the holder an exclusive right to drill exploration and appraisal wells and to carry and dispose of um, petroleum extracted during such drilling together with the rights conferred on holders of PEOs, that is the first license we mentioned. Then the petroleum mining lease lastly grants the holder an exclusive rights to carry out the development and production of petroleum within the lease area together with the rights conferred on holders of PEOs and PPLs. Other provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act concerns protection of host communities through the Host Community Development Trust Fund, the utilization of natural gas as a transition for via the um, midstream and downstream gas in infrastructure fund, and it also includes tax incentives for um, gas operations. If you love me to do an extensive overview of the Petroleum Industry Act, let me know in the comments section. Next is the Nigerian Oil and Gas industry content development act which we will abbreviate as the nca in 2010 the federal government of nigeria enacted the nigerian oil and gas industry content development act to promote indigenous participation and develop the capacity of workforce in the oil and gas industry content here refers to um, labor workforce contractors operators and so on in the petroleum industry so when we say Nigerian content, we mean Nigerian human resources, Nigerian materials, Nigerian services. Are you following? So the provisions of the Act, the NCA, applies to all matters pertaining to utilizing Nigerian content in respect of all operations or transactions carried out in or connected with the Nigerian oil and gas industry. The provisions of the NCA are mostly directed at operators. Operators are defined as uh, the NNPC Limited, its subsidiaries, and joint venture partners, indigenous and foreign oil and gas companies under any petroleum arrangement in Nigeria. In practice, several sections of the Act impose obligations on not just operators, but on contractors, subcontractors, project promoters, alliance partners, and other entities carrying out operations or transactions in the oil and gas industry. It mandates all operators and contractors to comply with the minimum Nigerian content levels for any particular project or product specification. This comes in handy when con competitors are bidding for contracts in the industry, and operators are required to operate um, to submit a Nigerian content plan to the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board in the bidding for any license, permit, or interest, and before carrying out any project. Although the NCA does not restrict the award of contracts in the industry to Nigerian companies or prohibit the award of contracts to companies that do not qualify as Nigerian companies, it however provides that first consideration should be given to Nigerian companies in the award of contracts for all projects in the oil and gas sector. In addition, Section 3, two, Section 3 Subsection 2 rather, of the NCA provides that Exclusive consideration should be given to Nigerian indigenous service companies that demonstrate ownership of equipment, Nigerian personnel, and capacity to execute contracts for works and services related to land and swamp operation areas. So that's exclusively for Nigerian indigenous companies. The Act device defines a Nigerian company as a company formed and registered in Nigeria in accordance with the provisions of the Company and Allied Matters Act, with not less than 51% equity shares held by Nigerians. The Act also provides that all companies operating the industry must employ only Nigerians in their junior and intermediate levels or any corresponding grades, while 
it also mandates operators to maintain a bank account in Nigeria in which a minimum of 10% of their revenue from Nigerian operations must be retained. The implementation of this act is carried out by the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board. The next key legislation is the Environmental Impact Assessment Act, which we will abbreviate as the EIA. Oil and gas operations invariably affect the environment, so operators must be conversant with the environmental assessment concentrations that various regulations provide. Environmental impact assessment is used to identify the environmental, social, economic impact of a project prior to decision making in order to forecast environmental consequences which such projects can result to. The Nigerian Environmental Impact Assessment Act aims to guarantee that any negative effect of development projects or activities are anticipated and addressed prior to the implementation of such projects. Section 2 of the EIA provides that no project or activity in the public or private sector of the economy shall be undertaken, embarked upon, or, on, or authorized without prior consideration of environmental effects of such projects at their early stages. An environmental impact assessment is also required, is mostly required where the project falls within the mandatory study list mentioned in the Act. And as you might have guessed, petroleum projects fall under this mandatory study list. An oil and gas company will embark on an EIA study and prepare the EIA report which will be submitted to the Federal Ministry of Environment. After, the Federal Ministry of Environment publishes the EIA report to the public. An EIA certificate or approval letter is issued then to certify that an EIA has been satisfactorily completed by the operator and that the project may proceed subject to conditions as may be stipulated in the certificate or approval letter. Next is Environmental Guidelines and Standards for the petroleum industry in Nigeria 2018. This regulation establishes the guidelines and standards for environmental quality control of the operations in the petroleum industry. It imposes obligations on operators in relation to managing and remediating contaminated land. In addition, it provides that all projects in the oil and gas industry must be issued with the requisite environmental permits Failure to get them may lead to penalties. Also, concerning the environment, um, concerning the environment is um, National Environmental Standards Regulatory and Enforcement Agency Act 2007. The NESRA Act was created to replace the Federal um, Environmental Protection Agency Act of 1992. So, um, our bone of contention here is that the application of this act, the NESRA Act, to the oil and gas sector is quite uncertain and nebulous. Why? The Act provides that the enforcement agency shall enforce compliance with the provisions of international agreements, protocols, conventions, and treaties on the environment relating to a list of matters which included oil and gas, which was clearly stated in the Act. In contrast, in the other functions of the agency listed, the Act expressly excludes the oil and gas sector. It provides that the agency shall enforce thorough compliance, monitoring, through co compliance and monitoring the environmental regulations and standards on noisy airlines um, and other water bodies than other than in the oil and gas sector. It also provides that the agency shall conduct environmental um, audits and establish data bank on regulatory and enforcement mechanisms of environmental standards other than in the oil and gas sector. So it's like the agency is excluded from dealing with the oil and gas sector at all. So using the exclusion rule of interpretation of statutes, the intent of the legislature is to exclude oil and gas activities from the scope of the agency's functions. Therefore, oil and gas should have been deleted from the list of matters which was listed in the prior provision that the um, agency shall enforce compliance on. We hope our 
lawmakers would work on that very soon. Next is the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency Establishment Act, which we will call the NOSDRA. The NOSDRA is the agency responsible for the implementation of the National Oil Spill Contingency Plan. An oil spiller is mandated to report an oil spill, oil spill timelessly and not later than 24 hours after the spill has occurred. Any default to do this attracts a penalty of the sum of 500,000 Naira for each day of defaults. In reality, most oil spillage incidents are ignored until it gets to the social media by which time irre irreparable damages would have been um, inflicted already. Among the list of regulations, key regulations is the Oil and Gas Export Free Zone Act. This act regulates oil and gas free trade zones. The Oil and Gas Free Trade Zone Export Authority, Authority is the national regulatory agency of, that supervises the operation of oil and gas free trade zones in the country. The incentives and tax exception obtainable, obtainable by an approved enterprise in the free trade zone include 100% import and export tax exemption, 100% exemption from commercial levies, 100% re repatriation of capital and profit, 100% foreign company ownership, no expatriate employment quotas, no corporate tax, no personal income tax, sponsor sponsorship of personnel by the free zone authority and many others. So an approved enterprise in a free trade zone area is simply exempted from federal state and local government taxes, levies and rates. It must be noted that the Act prohibits retail trade within the export zone. Section 14 provides that no retail trade shall be conducted within the export free zone without the prior approval of the authority. If an enterprise that is, that is a company in the free trade zone area imports any special products into the free zone on which value has been added, without changing the essential character of the product after processing in the free zone and intended for Nigeria market, shall be granted an import duty tariff rebate of 75%. So in essential, the Oil and Gas Free Trade Zone Act just provides exception and, um, and tax rebates for oil and gas companies in the free trade zone area. So back to environmental matters, the Climate Change Act, which we call the CCA, Shortly after the 26th Conference of Parties in Glasgow in 2021, the President of Nigeria signed the Climate Change Act into law. The CCA provides the legal framework for achieving low greenhouse gas emissions and sustainable economic development. The CCA applies to both private and public entities in Nigeria. The Act creates obligations for oil and gas operators, ensuring that their actions are in line with Nigeria's climate change strategies, net zero target and the National Action Plan on Climate Change. The Act establishes the groundwork for the Federal Government and the National Council on Climate Change to set up mechanisms for carbon tax and emission trading. Carbon tax refers to tax directly linked to the level of carbon dioxide, monetary disincentives, creating monetary, monetary discouragement now if the tax is set high enough. It is usually taxed at the upstream value chain because fossil fuel are still at their exploration and production stage, and so carbon accounting is easy at that stage. On the other hand, emissions trading is also an incentive towards um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, involving governments setting a cap on the maximum level of emissions, and it creates permits for each unit of emissions allowed under the cap. Under this system, Companies that reduce their emissions below their allocated allowances can sell their surplus allowances to other companies that need them. This then creates a market for emissions allowances, with the price of these allowances fluctuating based on um, supply and demand. Emissions trading also encourages companies to invest in low carbon technologies and practices. As you can see, the Climate Change Act is an incentive for energy companies to transition to greener technologies. The implementation of this act will set the oil and gas sector's path to reducing carbon emissions and take advantage of its economic benefits. If you were a lawyer to an oil and gas company, these are the regulations and guidelines and laws you would be advised to look into and consider the activities they govern.
We should also note that, aside these key legislations, there are a few other regulations and guidelines and agencies under an enabling, um, created under enabling enactments. You can get majority of these guidelines in the official website of the um, NUPRC, of the NMP, NMDPRA, of the NNPC also. If you like this video, kindly subscribe and share. Thank you. Mm -hmm.